Whenever I talk to people, I usually say, you know what, I really don't even need this microphone because I got that coaching voice. I can just project it out there. So you can't tell I'm a basketball guy. So that's my background. That's my passion. So. Anyways, my name's John Richter. I'm the technical director at um, Kivac Inc. in Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, my background is in mechanical engineering. I graduated from the University of uh, Dayton with my uh, undergraduate and graduate degree, and I've also been trained in the last 12 years in uh, Six Sigma as a, as a green belt. That's my background, and, and, and been in the uh, me mechanical engineering, new product development, uh, applied sciences, and engineering analysis for about the last 12 years. And one of the things I learned over the course of the last 12 years is the importance of fact-based decisions, that we've got to measure, 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 and base our business decisions on, uh, on factual information, which is so important, which is a driving part of this uh, discussion that we're going to, this investigation that we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at a comparison of cleaning methods for moving soils and bacteria from restroom grout lines and tile surfaces. Before I dive into the investigation, I want to just share with you briefly a story that, uh, that happened to us. We, we, we're all familiar with ATP testing, and we're just, uh, I thought uh, uh, Dr. Cole did an excellent job in presenting that. Well, we were, we were meddling, messing around with some of these different uh, testing techniques and doing some field work uh, with ATP testing. We went to a, a hotel, and uh, we're swabbing before and after cleaning. We got to the restroom. We were swabbing the restroom toilet, we were swabbing the sink, we did that, then the, then the person, the, the cleaning technician came in, she cleaned, and then we took, we re-swabbed and re-measured. After I, on, on the sink handle, once I had uh, taken the measurement, the reading had actually doubled, the ATP reading had actually doubled, and I was just shocked, I was like, I must have been, you know, just learning to use this tool and everything, I said, man, I must have done something wrong here. I was talking to one of my peers later, and she said, did you see what she did? And I said, no. He said, well, she was scouring the, 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 the toilet area. After she got done, she took that same, same scouring bag, and she washed the sink handle. And you know, uh, when I went up there and I measured that sink handle, it looked clean, it smelled clean, but obviously it wasn't clean. That's the, the, the driving point there is the importance that we measure the cleaning effectiveness of our cleaning programs that we're using. So before we dive in of, of this comparison, I want to give you a little bit, a bit of background because we're going to be comp comparing conventional flat mop uh, cleaning, which Elizabeth showed a very similar technique of what they use, uh, microfiber mop cleaning, and also a technique called spray and vac cleaning, which some of you might not be familiar with. Um, back in 1997, Bob Robinson Sr., the uh, CEO and the president of Kayak, was working at the time with Valley Janitorial. And, um, and, and they were serving the, the cleaning, uh, uh, you know, uh, people in the surrounding area of Hamilton, Ohio. And over the course of doing that, the number one complaint that they experienced was the cleaning of the restroom. So they set out on this quest to find a better way, a better, faster, you know, more uplifting way to clean a restroom because all of us, none of us want to clean a restroom with our hands and our face and our And so in the, in the course of this, they started to pull in different technologies. They started looking at pressure washing systems and wet vacuum systems and bring all this together in one system, which uh, eventually became known as the spray and vac method of cleaning restrooms. And um, they started to sell that over the next 10 years and, and, and started to receive feedback from customers that, hey, you know what, our grout lines look better, you know, we're, we're, they smell, our restrooms smell better, and uh, just receiving this anecdotal data and it really in 2006 started us at Kayak to really question is, you know, do we have a real better method of cleaning? Why is it, why are those grout lines getting better? Are we really having impact on the microbial activity on the surfaces within the restroom? And we all know that good science begins with questions. And so we began on this quest here to find a, uh, to compare different methods of cleaning uh, within the restroom for soils and bacteria from restroom grout lines and tile surfaces. Why is this study significant? I want to step back just for a minute and talk about it and ask the question, why is this so important? Why is it important to compare cleaning methods? I, I was given a, uh, 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 an article by Vince Fagan, one of my good friends, and it, it, it basically just, the name of the article is Superbug Bill Targets Hospitals, how in Illinois they're dealing with MRSA and trying to, uh, you know, it says here that five to 17,000 deaths a year of MRSA in hospitals. 
I heard Gene Cole say that uh, 90,000 people die of nosocomial disease, uh, diseases, hospital-acquired infections, every year. You know, and E. coli breakouts that we're experiencing. Us in the cleaning industry, do we stand up and say cleaning is the reason for these breakouts? No, it's not the no, it's not the only factor, but it is a factor. It is definitely a factor. We should stop and say, hey, we need to examine our cleaning processes. We need to begin, begin to measure our different cleaning processes to make sure that we're, uh, you know, lowering the risk for the, of our, within our indoor environment. So it's, impair, it's important that we begin to measure and to compare our different cleaning methods. And then, uh, so why the restroom? In 1995, uh, Dr. Gerba, who was here earlier, he had to leave to another engagement, uh, did a study that was called Enteric Bacterial Contamination of Public Restrooms. And pretty much what he found is that the restroom is a filthy place. They were taking bacterial isolations, E. coli and coliform isolations, on dif different surfaces within the restroom. They found that it's a filthy place. It's a biohazardous waste transfer station, is what we like to call it. Uh, Dr. Berry called it the human waste transfer station. So, but it's a filthy place. Interestingly enough, they found that not the toilet sites, not the sink sites, but the floor sites were the most contaminated, contaminated sites within the restroom. Why is that? Why is the floor so filthy? Well, Dr. Gerba did an, another study, and uh, he, he quantified and measured the uh, toilet aerosolization that takes place during the flushing cycle of a restroom, where uh, actually it spews out fecal matter and, and vile contaminants onto various surfaces up to five feet away uh, from, from the toilet. I, I can tell you I personally experienced the toilet, uh, this toilet aerosolization process at, at a hotel recently. I was sitting on the toilet and, and uh, it was one of those auto flushers. You know? I cannot stand those things. They're nice, but man, I tell you what, they, I, uh, I, I bent over in a direction. That thing sprayed me. I got the full effect of the toilet sneeze. So anyways, the, 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 the toilets are, uh, the toilet floors are, are one of the dirtiest places within the restroom. So why is this important? Why is the restroom, what, what role does the restroom play in the cleaning of the restroom within the overall indoor environment? Well, in a book study, um, The Secret Life of Germs by Philip Tierno, he talks about this fecal-oral transfer process, the phenomena of the spread of infectious disease. And uh, he talks, it begins in the restroom. We all visit the public restroom. We talk about the, the toilet aerosolization process, and this matter gets on the floor and on various surfaces. We come into the restroom. We all visit it there. We bring fomites like our, our backpacks, our book bags, our shoes, our pants, cell phones, pencils, whatever it is. We make contact with these various surfaces that have been contaminated. Then we can spread that throughout the, our office buildings, our school buildings, wherever it may be. Eventually it gets onto our hands and from our hands to our face, to our mouth, and thus we, get in, we can get in, infected. So what we see is, is that ultimately the restroom can be a source, a reservoir for contamination throughout the entire indoor environment. So thus the purpose of this study is to compare the cleaning effectiveness of string mop cleaning, microfiber mop cleaning, and spray and vac cleaning methods at removing soil and microbes from ceramic tile and grout floor surfaces in restrooms. The objective is to implement a quantitative, quantitative measure of cleaning effectiveness for soil and microbe removal. Scientifically demonstrate cleaning effectiveness through testing and field studies. Now, this is our science. It's not necessarily the best science. It's not necessarily, not necessarily the best science, not necessarily the perfect science, but we're trying to apply science in terms of measuring cleaning effectiveness. So let me give you an executive summary. We looked at two aspects of measuring cleaning effectiveness. One was measuring urine residue, which is a technique I'll describe to you, and the other one was bacteria. On the grout floor surfaces, we saw that the mops left 30 times more urine residue than the spray and vac in our measure. On tile surfaces, the mops left 12 to 13 times more urine residue. With respect to remo removing bacteria on grouted surfaces and comparing microfiber mops to spray and vac, the microfiber mop left 35 times more bacteria. So a comparison of cleaning methods. Uh, Dr. Berry did an excellent job of defining this, and I'm, I'm going to have to go through this quickly here. Uh, basically, the five steps of, of, of the cleaning process. Basically, what we're going to, uh, to focus on is the separation and the transport phenomena, the steps, the steps three and four of the cleaning process. And, 
and the separation and, and transporting that into the, in, away from the environment. Now with respect to string and, and, that, uh, string and uh, microfiber model, uh, what you see is you see a, an application in, in the process that we were using. It was very similar to uh, Elizabeth's. We apply a thin film of solution with a four second typically of dwell time between the application of solution and then the absorption or the adsorption of the, of the uh, solution up into the mop. Compared to the spray and vac uh, process, there's a, an application of the, solution, uh, of the solution, there's a flooding of the floor with a five minute uh, dwell time. So those are the key factors of separation are agitation, dwell time, uh, the amount of solution with respect to the soil that's present, the uh, amount of surfactant, the, the cleaning agents that are within the cleaning solution itself, obviously. With respect to transport, the phenomena that we're looking at with the string, string and flat mop was the absorption and the absorption effects uh, into the mop fibers of the soils versus high flow fluid extraction, we're creating a low pressure uh, system that's extracting the soils and the soil solution, the carriage by current into the vac wand and into the vac chamber. So let me describe to you real quick the cleaning process, very similar to what Marilyn did. Fresh mops and fresh water. We wetted, the, used a damp mop. We did a two-stroke process, very similar to what Marilyn, or Marilyn, I'm sorry, to Elizabeth. With respect to the spray and vac process, as, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, what we did was, uh, first we spray on chemical solution at low pressure, 20 PSI. There's a five minute dwell time, then there's this two-stroke process of a high flow fluid extraction at 108 inches of lift. The measurement technique that we used uh, for urine detection, uh, urine, we were measuring the amount of creatinine concentration. Creatinine is a, uh, 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 it's a result of the met met metabolic, metabolic uh, process and it's excreted in urine as a metabolic waste. And so we were measuring, this is very common in the health industry and in uh, urine adulteration. And so what we were using is these test strips to, we would apply a drop of water in, in a location, we would um, agitate, we would then uh, apply the test strip and then compare that test strip with a color chart. So this is the first experiment. This is a lab experiment. We, we were using water as our cleaning solution, so there's no uh, chemical applied. We're applying the uh, urine samples and allowing it to dry and then taking measurements, we're taking, uh, bringing the, the surfaces up to a creatinine level of 50 milligrams per deciliter. And then we would take measurements after cleaning. We would do the clean, uh, the clean process we just talked about and then take uh, creatinine levels uh, perpendicular and parallel to the stroke of, of the uh, device. And here are the results. We found, we, we did 11, we did this tr 11 trials that were involved with this. These are the average results. We found that the um, spray and vac process left uh, 30 times, as mentioned earlier, urine residue. With respect to the tile, it left 12 times urine residue. Then we did a field comparison where we were comparing the mop, it was daily string mop cleaning. Out in the field, we were, uh, a field service provider was, uh, a facility service provider actually was taking measurements before and after cleaning. And then the, the other process we used was the spray and vac process. So every two weeks, uh, the, uh, they would do a spray and vac of the facility with daily string mop cleaning in between. So we're really looking for trending. We had this hypothesis that um, uh, that the, the spray and vac process would would uh, produce better cleaning results, but uh, we wanted to test that out in the field, which uh, we had mentioned earlier, so important. And we saw that it was six times left six times. Uh, um, uh, uh, the, the mop left six times more urine residue than the uh, spray and back process in this field study. So then we said, okay, what impact does that have on, um, on cleaning effectiveness with respect to bacteria concentration? So um, Dr. Barry got us hooked up with measuring aerobic bacteria uh, concentrations on various surfaces using um, a, a, a swab, swabbing technique of a square inch and then uh, putting that into a, a, a milliliter of, of a sterile fl fluid and then applying that fluid onto a petri film plate to, and then doing, letting that incubate for 48 hours and then taking, uh, measuring or counting the number of CFU present. 
So we conducted pretty much the same test, except now we introduced an EPA-registered quaternary ammonium disinfectant into the, at, uh, at the correct dilution levels. We applied urine, and, and we also include fecal solutions. Uh, don't get too overwhelmed with that, but uh, Dr. Gerba is pretty familiar with that if you've ever talked to him. Allow that to dry. And then we took measurements before and after cleaning, as we mentioned, um, uh, parallel and perpendicular to the stroke. These were our, the results of our, the fi our findings were that the, that the, uh, spray, the uh, mops, or the microfiber mop left 35 times more bacteria residue than the spray and vac process. Bacteria, that's the average bacteria concentration. So results and conclusion. On the ground surface, the mops left, uh, as we mentioned, uh, 30 times more urine residue. String and flat mops had a cleaning efficiency of about 38% on the grout surface. The grout surface, you know, the concave shape of it, the surface roughness really held the dirt, and it's very difficult to get down in and lift the soils from those grouted surfaces. The tile surface, the mops left 12 times more urine residue with a cleaning efficiency of 76%. In both cases, the spray and vac that high flow fluid extraction was, to, was able to have a, the same cleaning efficiency, 98% cleaning efficiency with the grout and 98% cleaning efficiency with respect to the tile. And then the removal of the bacteria, the uh, microfiber left 35 times more bacteria. We found that the creatinine test strips was a, was a quick way of measuring um, cleaning effectiveness within the restroom. Obviously, it's, 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 it's environment that's applicable to is, is the restroom facility. You know, the thing about this is, is, as I mentioned earlier, this is our data. This is uh, what we're doing. We're, 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 you know, we believe in the science and the science of cleaning and measure, measure, measure. You know, this might not be the best science. This might not be the perfect science, but we're applying science to our business decisions, and, and that's what's important. And we're open to move forward and, and to apply the science and, and improve our science uh, methodologies. So in the future, what we're looking to is, as was mentioned earlier, and I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, is the application of ATP in terms of measuring cleaning effectiveness. We've already done some studies with this, you know, a measuring cleaning effectiveness within the restrooms. We're seeing very similar results that we were seeing with the bacteria tests and with the urine residues tests. And so what we'd like to do is to set some benchmarks, some, some standards around, you know, how clean does a toilet seat need to be, a sink handle and a restroom floor. As I mentioned in that earlier story, just because it looks clean, it smells clean, doesn't necessarily mean it's clean, especially when we're talking about cleaning for health. So with that, that concludes my presentation.